So the Wiggers diagram is a graph of the cardiac cycle. The pressure changes over time and it's meant to be helpful to understand how changes in pressure correspond to each of the events, but it does require um, looking closely at it. It's kind of like the estrus cycle events. There's a lot shown there. So I'm gonna draw it and then we're gonna look at another picture of it as well. What it's doing is, it's really a diagram of the left side of the heart. We're gonna use as an example so the pressures in the left side are slightly greater than the right side because the left side of the heart has to pump to the entire body. So that's what we're gonna graph here, like the left ventricle. And that's what, um, yeah. So what I have shown here so far is pressure in millimeters of mercury over time. And I've got some numbers here from zero to 120. Millimeters of mercury is a measure of pressure. So a barometer that you measures air pressure would also measure millimeters of mercury. Up top, I've got the phases of the cardiac cycle that we've already talked about and kind of color coded. So what I wanna start with is looking at ventricular pressure, which we did in the previous video already. I'm gonna make this purple to correspond to the ventricle. Ventricular pressure is going to start um, pretty darn low, go right here. And it's gonna have a little blip here that corresponds to atrial systole. Um, when, the, when the atria contract and kick that little bit of blood at 20% into the ventricles, pressure is going to increase some. But then really the most important thing is this huge increase due to isovolumic contraction, followed by a sharp drop due to ventricular ejection. So during ventricular systole, we've got a sharp rise in pressure and then a sharp decrease in the left ventricle. Right ventricle as well, but not to the same extent, not to 120. This is going to drop then and then kind of slowly start to rise back up as the ventricle, um, actually I'm going to drop it down a little bit lower to be consistent with what I started with. And then it's going to rise back up as passive filling occurs, a slow rise. So this is the left ventricle. Let's go to the aorta next because that's um, physi physically connected to the left ventricle. So those changes are gonna to correspond to ventricle. They're all gonna correspond, but these ones kind of directly. Aortic pressure is never going to be as low as the pressure in the heart. So the low end in the aorta is about 80. 120 over 80 is average blood pressure um, in the aorta, which is the same as the blood pressure measured in your brachial artery that we'll come back to next week. So this is aorta. We're going to have a um, kind of a slow decrease here. And then we're going to have it kind of follow along the ventricular pressure. It's going to drop. It's going to be a little notch here. And then it's going to go down. This is aorta. So following kind of along the ventricular pressure because the aorta is receiving blood from that left ventricle. This here is called the dichrotic notch. It's, it's due to backflow after the semilunar valves close. The aortic valve is going to close. Aortic valve is going to open right here. That causes a, a slight decrease in pressure as you relieve pressure right as the blood flow increases. And then you're gonna have um, a slight increase here as a consequence of that valve closing again and increasing pressure very transiently in that local aorta before the blood flows away to the heart, I mean, to the body, sorry. Okay. So then lastly, we've got atrial pressures. Atrial pressure is going to also be pretty low at um, rest. Atrial diastole is what we're at right now. During atrial systole, we've got a bump up as that heart contracts. And then we're gonna kind of stay low before we rise back up during 
atrial filling. So this is when there's that filling of the ventricles that goes through the atria. So kind of, um, we've got some fluctuations through here. You can see right here, I have systole again. That's where this, that contraction is increasing it right here. So kind of the key point right here is that during atrial systole, we do have a small increase in pressure that then goes back down as that blood goes to the ventricles.